वेलकम टू पाथ लेक्चर एवरीवन इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टॉक अबाउट ईफ एल्स एलिफ और नेस्टेड ईफ एल्स एलिफ काइंड ऑफ अ स्टेटमेंट सो सी गाइस एवरी डे वी ट्राई टू मेक अ डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन सर्टेन कंडीशंस बेस्ड ऑन अ सर्टेन सर्कमस्टांसिस फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स सपोज आई एम प्लानिंग टू बाई अ मोबाइल फोन एंड आई हैव टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज इन माई हैंड नाउ आई गो टू द मार्केट एंड देन आई ट्राई टू चेक अ प्राइज ऑफ अ मोबाइल फोन सो if price is more than 10000 rupees i'll say i'll not buy it if price is lesser than 10000 rupees obviously i'm going to buy some of the mobile phone so based on this if else condition so if condition is going to satisfy means if condition is going to be true i'll take it if condition is going to be false i'm not going to take it so we have made a decision to purchase a mobile phone or not to purchase a mobile phone similarly in our 10th exam 12th exam so we try to get a different different kind of a percentile scores and based on that we try to decide that which stream i am supposed to opt for or maybe which college or which exam for which i am supposed to prepare similarly college does the same thing so college always try to put up a condition that if student is having this 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 tick tick means checklist criteria if they are going to pass it only in that situation i am going to give you the admission so everywhere in your life starting from a morning till evening throughout your life you try to make a decision and you always try to make a decision based on the circumstances even if you are going out and if it's raining so what you will do if it is raining so let's take a umbrella if it is not raining i'll not take a umbrella kind of a decision we try to make every day similarly in case of programming language you can write a similar kind of a condition you can write a similar kind of a logic in a easiest possible way not just in a python programming but almost in every programming language you will be able to find out a certain kind of a situation certain circumstances so here in this particular lecture i am going to show you how to write a logic based on a certain situation based on a certain circumstances so let me share my screen guys i believe my screen is visible to all of us and let's get started so here the very first program i am going to show you is going to be a basic one very basic one but you will be able to learn a lot if you are a beginner and then i'll try to increase a complexity so let's suppose if i have to write a program to check a number so whether number is positive whether number is negative or whether the number is zero for a particular integer i have to write this kind of a situation So let's write it down. So here I'll try to create a variable called as number, and then I'll try to take a input. I'll just ask user enter a number. Okay, I know that that input is going to take everything as a string. Okay, so I'll try to convert. I'll try to do a type casting into an int integer. So let's suppose user is going to enter some number. Now what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to check a condition. So I'll check if. so if is a reserved keyword inside a python i'll try to check a condition that if number is greater than 0 in that case do what in that case try to print number is positive okay number is positive over here fine so i'll be able to check a condition now let's execute and here i'm going to enter 34 let's suppose so yes i'm trying to enter a number 34 okay i'm trying to enter a number is equals to 34 now here it will try to check 34 is greater than 0 it's going to give me true so here if it is true it will try to execute a block that you are writing inside this if statement now in every programming language you will be able to find out in not every i would say in almost most of the programming language you will be able to find out that language uses a curly braces to manage the indentation or to maintain the blocks of the code but here in case of python you will be able to find out this one this colon and after a colon you have to maintain an indentation with the help of tab space over here so here we have a tab space you have to maintain the indentation now in that way system is going to understand my language my compiler is going to understand that you are trying to write this particular block with respect to this particular criteria and as a beginner obviously you are going to make a lot of mistake so just try to write at least 10 to 15 program so that you will be able to aware about the indentation for example let's suppose if i am not giving this colon now if i am going to hit enter what will happen i'll come over here now if i am going to write code from here 
it is going to give me syntactical error. Execute, as you can see, there is a syntactical error. If I'm going to write a code from here, there is a syntactical error, you will be able to find it. It is telling me that it is expecting colon, means it is expecting some sort of an indentation. Now, let's suppose if I have given a colon, again, I'll try to execute, there is a indentation error. So it is expecting indentation before this one so that it will be able to understand that this print is not a separate print. I can write a separate print. That's completely fine, right? I can write a separate print, but it is expecting this print to be a part of this particular block. Let's suppose, let's suppose I have written this if statement, okay? I have written this if statement and I don't want to write this print. I don't want to write this print. I don't want to call any kind of action. What I can do is I can maintain a proper indentation and simply I can write a keyword called as pass. So pass is a keyword which will help you out. See, I have written everything, but I'm not writing anything after if statement. I am writing just pass. So basically pass is a keyword which will help you out to avoid any kind of action. Intentionally, if I don't want to write anything, that's completely fine. Now let's suppose if I'm writing print over here, right print i'm going to write this is my print execute input any number so it is trying to print this is my print now this print is not a part of this if block this print is a separate print separate block of a code which i am trying to write and this is what i was trying to prove that if I have to write anything which should happen after this one, I should write in a proper indentation. If I'm going to write it in a proper indentation, it is going to treat this one as a separate one. There will not be any kind of effect of this condition on this particular line. This is a completely separate line. Okay, so here, let me copy the same piece of a code in this particular place, let me remove this entire things. Pass we are able to understand. And let me print over here. Number is positive. And let me print the number. Now let's suppose if I have to write another condition. This is one of the condition. I have to write another condition. So I have to check if number is equal equal to zero. Because as of now, if I'm going to execute it, and if I'm going to give zero, hit enter, it is not going to give me any outcome. It is not going to complain. It is not going to give me any error. But at the same point of a time, it is not giving me any kind of a outcome. Now, why it is not giving me any kind of outcome? So it will simply go over here. Number is equal equal to what? Zero. It is trying to check. Zero is greater than zero. No, it is going to be false. So if it is false, it will not come inside this if block and it is not going to print it. Okay. Now, after that, I have not written any criteria. So it will come out of this entire block automatically. Fine. My code will come out of the block automatically. But let's suppose, let's suppose if I have to print something, if number is equal, equal to zero. So how I will be able to print it? Let's do. So there is a block called as if. So inside the if block itself, there is something called as elif, else if. So it's called as elif in a shorthand. Again, it's a reserved keyword and I can write a condition. Now, you are supposed to write elif after if block all the time and it should be a part of a if block all the time. Indentation wise, so indentation of if and elif should be parallel. So in the same pointer location, so you are supposed to write it down. So here I can try to write number is equal equal to zero and then try to print print what? So print this is or maybe input number is Z E R O Z E R O zero. Now enter, enter zero. Now it is trying to print input number is zero. Again, code is going to be executed in the same sequence. It will come over here. It will ask you to input a data. Then it will start from here. It will try to check zero is greater than zero, false. If it is false, right? If it is false, it will never go inside this particular block. It will come to the next block. It will try to check 0 is equal equal to 0. Yes, it's going to be true. So it is going to print something. Okay, that's completely fine. Now, let's suppose if I have to write another condition. Okay, 
another condition I have to write. So how I will be able to write it down? In the same sequence, for the same input, for the same number, I have to write the another condition. So let's suppose I'm going to write elif, okay, number is lesser than zero. For a negative number, I have to check something. So maybe I can write print and then I can write input number is negative. And then I can try to print maybe a number as well. Execute. Now here, if I'm going to enter minus 45, as you can see, it will try to take the input. That's fine. Then it will try to check this condition. Condition is going to be false. So it will not execute this one. Then it will come over here. Minus 45 is equal equal to 0. Again false. So I will not come over here. Then it will come over here. It will try to check. Minus 45 is lesser than 0. It is true. If it is true, let's come over here. Simple. So here, as you can see, that I'm able to write a multiple condition, not just one or two. I can write hundreds of condition after if. So check this condition, this condition, this condition. So wherever condition is going to be true, it will just try to call a respective action. As simple as that. Yes, it's very simple, guys. Very simple. You are writing a condition. If condition is going to be true, call the action. Simple. Okay. Now, some of you are going to argue that what if if I'm going to write if a statement, then again if and then again if. I'm not writing elif, elif, elif. Yes, you can do it and you will be able to get an exact same outcome. Let's suppose I'm going to enter minus 45. So it is able to check this one. And again, code is trying to check this sequence, then this and then this. But how this one and the previous one is different. How this one, this piece of code and the previous one is different. So here I have written elif. Here I'm writing just if, 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 if. So in this way, even I can write hundreds of if. But... This one is a separate block of the code. It's not a part of same if elif. This is a separate and this is a separate. Whereas this is going to follow the same sequence. All of this piece of a code is a part of same if elif kind of a block. So here we are writing a three different different kind of a block. And here we are writing one single block. That is a difference in between. So wherever you have to do a check in a sequential manner, Right? For one singular instances, you have to go ahead with this one, not with this one. So this is not advisable. In some of the situation, I'm going to show you that the second approach is not going to work. In some of the situation, I'll show you that in a future as well. Right. So when we will encounter a multiple uh, different, different kind of a situation, I'm going to show you even that particular part. So here, I believe if and elif is clear. Yes. So if and elif. So one if and then you can try to write a multiple elif in a series. It is going to work for you. Now there is a block called as else block. Okay. So there is a if block. There is a elif block. And there is a else block. Now let's try to understand what is a else block. How I can try to write it down. So here I'll try to take a different situation. So here I'm going to take a situation. So where I'm going to check whether the given number is even number or maybe a odd number. Something like that I have to check. The given number is an even number or odd number. So here I'm going to take an input number, integer, just a type casting, and then input, I-N-P-U-T, input. And I can write enter a number to check even or odd. Okay, fine. Now I can write a condition. So guys, when a number is going to be even number, so if it is completely divisible by 2, means if remainder is equal to 0, in that case, number is going to be even. If I'm going to divide a number by 2, and remainder is going to be 0. If remainder is not going to be 0 after dividing by 2, in that case, number is a odd number. As simple as that, right? Let's write a condition. So if number remainder, when I'm trying to divide by 2 is equal equal to 0, then in that case, Try to print, print what? Number is a even number. Maybe I can try to print number over here. Fine. Now, let's suppose if I'm going to write or if I'm going to enter. Let, let me execute it first. So here, I'm going to enter 14. 
Okay, so number is an even number, 14. Yes, that's true. So 14 divided by 2, remainder is equals to what? This is going to find out, a remainder, this operator is going to find out, remainder. So remainder is going to be 0 when I'm going to divide it by 2. So 14 is a even number. Now again execute and this time enter 15. Now nothing has happened. I'm not able to see any kind of a outcome. So maybe right maybe I can try to write a default condition. So if this condition is not going to be true then do what? If this condition is not going to be true then do what? So either number is going to be even or number is going to be odd. There is only two situation which is possible right. So here what I can do is I can try to write a condition. Yes, I can try to write a condition. So what is the kind of a condition which I am supposed to write? So maybe I can try to write a default condition over here which is called as else. So with else I am not supposed to write any condition. So else will be executed if none of the above. Let's suppose I have written a multiple condition. So if none of the above is going to be true, right? None of the above is going to be true. So by default, else will be executed. By default. You're not supposed to even write a condition. By default. So if you have to write a certain situation, so where none of the above, I have written so many condition above, right? I have written so many condition above, but none of the condition is going to be true. So else will be executed by default. So if you have to get into such kind of a situation, you can call else block. So maybe I can call else block over here. I can simply write that number must be odd. Execute. Now if I am going to enter 15, here it is printing. So this condition is going to be false, right? This condition is going to be false. It will come to the next one and number must be odd. I have written a spelling of number is incorrect. That's fine. Just a print statement, right? So here <clears throat> it will come to the else block if none of the above is going to be true. If it is not going to satisfy any kind of a condition that you have written, then obviously it will come to the default one. I could have written even elif block. That is that is going to work. That, that's completely fine. Yes, that's completely fine in this particular place. Let's suppose I'm going to enter 0. So number is even number 0. So 0 divided by 2, again remainder is equals to 0. It is going to be true. So in any other situation, it will simply fall under else block. Now, let me show you another condition over here. So let's suppose, let's suppose someone is asking you to enter your age and based on your age, they are going to decide whether you are child, whether you are adult or whether you are senior, something like that, right? So let's try to write with respect to if else elif kind of a statement and let's try to verify it. So here I'm going to use if elif else all three, all three blocks. So previously I have used only if and else. Before that, I have used if and elif. Now, this time, I'm going to use all three at a time. So here, let's suppose someone is asking you to enter a age. So fine, enter a age. I'll do a typecasting, input, input, and then enter your age. Okay, that's fine, enter your age. Now here, I'm going to check condition. So if age is lesser than 18, so if your age is lesser than 18, then you are what? So you are basically a child. You are a child, just a kid. Okay. So here age, I can try to print. Then again, I have to check. So if, right, if your age is lesser than 65, let's suppose if your age is lesser than 65, then you are basically adult. Let's suppose. So here, elif, I can write elif, if your age is lesser than 65 then what so then try to print you are an adult and let me print age over here now i have to write a default condition so if you are not going to fulfill any of this criteria let's suppose your age is 75 let me execute this one first so if i'm going to enter 13 okay i'm a child if I'm going to enter maybe a 23, I'm basically a adult. So if I'm going to enter 13, so it is trying to check 13 is lesser than 18. True. Do it. Okay. Call this action. Now, if I'm going to enter 23, it will come over here. 23 is lesser than 18. False. Don't do this one. Come to the next one and check. So 23 is lesser than 65. 
true. So do this. Now let's suppose if I'm going to enter 80 over here. Now it is not doing anything because it is not falling under any of this criteria. So 80 is lesser than 18? False. 80 is lesser than 65? False. So it is not fulfilling any of this criteria. It is not giving me any kind of a outcome. So maybe I can try to write a default block else over here and then I can try to print that if none of the condition is satisfied, none of the condition which I have written above is satisfied, in that case, try to print what? So I am a senior. Simple. Let's suppose I'm entering 90. Okay, I'm a senior. And then maybe I can try to print over here age as well. So it should be like a comma. So here 90 execute 90. I'm a senior. My age is basically 90. So here I'm just trying to show you combination of if, elif and else all three. Okay. Now same example I'll try to take and here what I will do is I'll try to write else right after if and then I'm trying to write elif. Okay, so if I have written and then I'm writing else before elif. Now this sequence is an incorrect sequence. As you can see, it is it has started giving me a compile time error itself. Not runtime, it's giving me a compile time error that this syntax is basically wrong syntax. So whenever you are writing if, elif and else, so first you should start with if and then you should come to the elif and then you should come to the else block. You can write one if statement, multiple elif statement and then else statement. Finally, you can try to write. So you are not supposed to write else in between. So this is one of the learning that you are supposed to take. Let's suppose if I'm writing elif in a first, elif in a first and then if I'm writing if. Again, this sequence is an incorrect sequence. So first if and then only elif and then you are supposed to write else. Okay, now let's suppose if I'm writing a program. So can I write just if and elif? Yes, I can write it down. I have already shown you that example as well. Without even else, I'm able to write it down. So without even else, you can write it down. There is no issue at all. Yes, there is no issue at all. Now, can I write just a if statement? Yes, that's true. I have shown you the very first example, right? Where I was using just a if statement initially. So it is going to work. Can I write just else statement? No. Can I write just elif statement? No. It should always start with if. So only if you can write, only if and elif you can write or you can try to take all three if, elif and else in a sequence and then it is going to work fine for you. Now let me take another different different example. So we all try to give an exam, right? We all try to give an exam and based on the score that we are going to obtain, so in a classes, I used to get a different different kind of a grade, maybe grade A, grade B, grade C and blah, blah, right? So let me write a program. So based on the score, it is going to give me a grade. Okay. So here I can write score and then maybe integer and then maybe input. So here I can try to ask a user that enter your score. Okay. So once user is going to enter the score, once user is going to enter the score, so I'm going to check if a score is greater than equal to 90. If your score is greater than equal to 90. Okay. So in that case, print basically. Print what? So print basically grade A. So you have received a grade A. Now, there could be a different situation. So if my score is, if score is greater than or equal to 80. So in that case, print what? Print what? So basically, my grade is grade B. Now, here I have written if, I should write elif. Now next, elif. My score is C O R E score is greater than or equal to 70. So in that case, do what? So in that case, print. Print what? Grade C, let's suppose I will be able to receive. Else, so if I am below this one, else, print. Print what? Fail. Okay, print what? Fail. So here as you can see that, that I'm, I will be entering a score. 
and then I'll try to check if the score is more than 90, give this grade, then give this grade, then give this grade. Otherwise, try to fail it. Execute. Now here, if I'm going to write 50, I'm fail. Yes. If I'm going to enter basically uh, 65, I'm going to fail. If I'm going to enter maybe 77, I'm going to get grade C. So here you can see that, that I'm writing one if statement, then subsequently I'm writing basically elif, elif, and then finally I'm trying to write a else condition. Now instead of this, if you're going to write just if, just if, and then you are going to write else, let's execute it. So here, 65, fail. Here, 77, grade C. Here, 80, grade B and grade C. Now, let's try to understand why we are getting two grades over here. So, let me print the score. So, what is the score which I have entered? Score is equals to 80. Okay, score is equals to 80. Now, when I'm trying to enter, this is the situation. See guys, just try to understand the situation. So, here, score is equals to 80, which I have entered. Okay, fine. Now, score is equals to 80. It will come over here. 80 is greater than 90. No. So, it's going to be false. Don't execute. Now, here, 80 is greater than equal to 80. Yes, it's equal to 80. So, true. Print grade B. So, print grade B. Now, this if block is different. This if block is different. And this if else is different. This is the combined block. Right? So, it is trying to check this one. And then this one. And then this if else block is different. Yes, this if else block is different. It's not a part of same sequence. This is completely different. So, again, it will try to check for this one. Right? It will keep on checking for all the if block. Now, even... 80 is greater than equal to 70. Even this is true. Even this is true. So it is printing grade C. Now that's a reason I told you this is different and if elif else is different. You have to, whenever you have to write, because this entire block is different. This entire block is not same. So here we have written three block of code. One, then two, and then this three block of the code. It's not a part of same block. It looks like that I have written a same block of the code, but it is not a same block of a code, my dear friend. Yes, that is the reason I told you. You can write it maybe in this one, but it will keep on checking for every condition over here. It is not going to stop unless and until, because every block is different. Every piece of the code is different. But if I'm writing if, elif, and else, it will only try to check for once. It will only try to check for once. So let me copy this one. And if I'm writing elif over here, if I'm writing elif over here, if I'm going to enter 80, right, this is going to fail, this is going to pass and it is going to print this one and terminate the entire block. It will never check further. It will not go and check for this one. It will not go and check for this one. So that is the advantage of one single block of if, elif and else. Once this will be true, right, once this condition is going to be true, it will never check for the next one. But in this case, as my blocks are separate, this if is separate, this if is separate, and this if is separate, it will keep on checking for this block, then this block, and then this block. Doesn't matter, even if it is going to be true, it will again check because this is the separate if block. But here, if one is going to be true, it will not going to check for the next one. That's the reason. That's the reason. So you may argue that I can write multiple if, 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 but you should not write for one single circumstances. I believe this part is pretty much clear to all of us. Okay, fine. Now, I'm going to write another uh, condition or I'm going to write another situation scenario over here. So where I have to give you a discount. So whenever you go to a mall, they try to give you a discount, right? And that discount happens based on the purchase. So if your purchase is more than uh, 1000 rupees, they give you maybe a 10% of discount. If your purchase is maybe uh, more than 500 rupees, they give you 5% of discount. Yes. So if your purchase amount is going to be increased, maybe they are going to give you more and more discount. So here, 
I'll just try to check. I'll just try to write a code. So which will try to calculate a discount based on the purchase, based on the purchase amount, which I will be having inside a mall. So let's try to write a code for that one. So here I can just try to write amount. Okay. So, so here amount can be a float. So INPUT, INPUT, enter the purchase amount and I have to calculate what will be a discount. So here I can write a condition that if amount is more than 1000 rupees, right? In that case, amount is going to be what? So amount is going to be amount into discount of 10%. 10% of the discount I'm going to get. Okay. I can write elif. Elif amount is going to be more than 500 rupees. So in that case, discount amount is going to be what? So discount amount is, or I can write maybe this variable as a discount variable. This variable as a discount variable. So discount is going to be amount into 0 0.05 means 5 percent elif amount purchase amount is greater than 250 in that case discount is going to be amount into 0 0.025 now here else your discount is going to be zero. Okay. Now I'm supposed to print what is a discount. Okay. So here discount is equals to discount comma comma. So this discount it is going to print. So I'm supposed to get finally that what is a discount I will be able to get based on my purchase amount. So execute. Let's suppose, okay, so here I have made a mistake. It should be like a colon. So execute. Let's suppose my purchase price is 2000 rupees. What is the discount I will be able to get? 200 rupees because it will fall under this criteria. So 2000 rupees is greater than 1000. So the discount is basically amount into this one. Okay. So 200 rupees of discount I will be able to get. Let's suppose uh, my purchase price is 461.89. What is the discount? Discount is going to be 11.54725 rupees. I will be able to get. Very simple, right? Now, let's suppose if my purchase is basically 121 rupees. Discount is going to be 0. So here, this is just trying to calculate what? This is just trying to calculate a discount amount based on the price. And I believe in every mall system, right? Whenever they try to scan your barcode, they try to give you some sort of a discount based on your purchase amount. So they, they try to give you some sort of a goodies as well, some sort of perks they used to give you. So all these things internally, someone has written a code for it, right? Someone has written a code. It's not like people are just trying to calculate manually because they try to do a millions of transaction on a regular basis. And that too, everything has been done by system. So obviously someone has written a code and based on that, you will be able to get a discount and you will be able to get a final price. Okay, fine. Now let's try to understand a next piece of a code. Okay. So let's suppose, let's suppose uh, there is a situation. So where, and this is going to be a little bit complex. So here I'm going to show you some nesting. So it means if inside if I'm going to show you means condition inside a condition, because there could be a condition inside a condition inside a condition that there could be like a millions of situation or n number of situation, infinite number of situation, right? Depends upon the cases. So here I have to write if inside a if. So I'll try to take one single situation. So here situation is such that, that uh, I'm trying to do a shipment. I'm trying to maybe send a parcel, parcel to my friend. Okay. So maybe I'm trying to send a gift to my friend. So obviously whenever I, I'll try to send a gift, gift will be having some sort of a weight, right? And I have to send that particular weight, that particular gift to some location. So maybe a local location, maybe to the international location. 
there will be a different different price shipment price blue dot is going to charge or maybe uh, some other courier services is going to charge so what i will do is i'll try to do some sort of a calculation that what will be the cost based on the location and based on the weight okay fine so here i'll try to take two input weight let's suppose from a weight machine i'm getting an input so weight is going to be f l o a t float and uh, here i n p u t input enter the weight of a package okay fine and then let's suppose i'm sending i'm just trying to take two location two kind of a location one is a local one is international obviously location will be different based on the pin code in a real time but as of now we are very very like a beginner in a, with respect to a python code so i'm going to take maybe like a local and international kind of first off okay so location okay so now what is the location so i can try to take the input enter a location either local or international okay this is the intr nati o n a l international okay so user is going to enter the location so maybe they can uh, like a uh, send a location into a capital letter small letter something like that so what i will do is i'll try to convert everything into a lower case i'll just try to normalize everything in a lower case and as you know we already talked about this lower function in our string classes so lower is a inbuilt function it will convert everything into a lower cases so user is going to enter either local uh, local or international okay so i will be having a weight and i will be having a location i will be having these two things now i can write a condition that if location if location is equal equal to local so i'm just trying to check the condition local so if user has entered locl local in a smaller case okay so even if you are going to enter something in a upper case that's completely fine i'm normalizing it i'm trying to convert everything into a lower cases so here if location is equal equal to local in that case what i am supposed to do so if i am sending a package to a local location so first of all i'm checking where you are sending a package then i'll try to check what i'll try to check a weight yes i'll try to check a weight so i'll try to write again inside if block i'm going to write another if block over here so if weight is lesser than equal to 2 2 kg 2 pound anything right so if location is local it will check one condition then again it will check another condition so if weight is lesser than 2 kg right so maybe cost i'm going to charge is equals to 3 bucks okay three bucks if right weight is lesser than 2 kg or equal to 2 kg again i can write a condition that elif weight is lesser than right sorry lesser than equal to 5 kg i am going to charge basically 5 rupees for example right else if it is more than that so else i can try to write cost is equals to maybe i'm just writing a custom formula over here so cost is equals to weight minus 2 into 1.5 kg so if it is weight is lesser than 2 kg cost is this if weight is lesser than 5 kg so if user is going to enter maybe like a for example 4 right so it will fall over here if it is none of this above then in that case i'm just trying to write my own custom formula right so you can write your own custom formula anything based on the shipping industry based on the courier service industry so you can write a formula so i'm just writing that weight cost is going to be 3 plus weight minus 2 into something this is just my own custom formula there is no hard and fast formula and this formula is not applicable inside the industry believe me okay so this is going to be the cost so here i'm just trying to show you that inside one if statement i am again able to write if elif else statement so this is something called as nested nested means one inside another i can even write one inside another inside another inside another that is also possible right that is also possible for example so if weight is lesser than 2 kg come over here and then again i can write a condition that if weight is lesser than equal to 1 kg 
right then cost is going to be cost is going to be 2 rupees else cost is going to be 3 rupees okay so again if inside first if inside if inside if else i am able to write so always go after the indentation and here as you can see these lines right so this lines is trying to maintain the proper indentation so this is the outer block this is the inner block so all of this is falling under same sequence and then this is the again inner block everything is falling under this particular sequence so if inside if inside if three layer of if i am able to write it down i can write n number of layer that doesn't matter at all depends upon my situation my own situation i can write the condition okay so fine now here if location was local this is something which it is going to check and process right else else means if location is not local means if location is going to be international means anything apart from local anything apart from local right so in that case what it is supposed to do so if again i am going to write a condition if weight is lesser than equal to lesser than equal to maybe uh, 2 kg right cost is equals to 5 rupees else I can write a costing so costing is equals to 5 plus maybe I can write weight minus 1 into 4 rupees something like that right I am writing my own formula in this particular place so if location is local do this check this one if location is not local check try to check this one and then finally i'll try to print print what so i'll try to print cost what is a cost so i'm going to print a cost variable over here now execute so first it is asking me enter the weight of the package so i'm going to enter weight of the package is equals to five okay now second it is asking me enter a location local or international so i'm going to write l capital o c l local now cost is equals to 5 cost is equals to 5 so what is the weight i have entered so basically this is the input for the weight 5 what is the location i have entered so location was basically a local okay this is something which i have entered i have entered capital l but as i am writing lower case so everything it will try to convert into a lower cases so weight is equals to 5 location is equal to local so first it will try to check this condition location is equal to local true so let's go inside this particular block. Now weight is equals to 5 I have entered. So weight is lesser than equal to 2. False. So where it will go? It will go and check the same indentation. So this is going to be false. So it will not even look into this one. It will go where? Same indentation. It will check here. Weight is lesser than equal to 5. So weight was equal to 5. Cost is equals to 5. It is printing the cost okay now let me re-execute this one let me re-execute this one so execute now enter the weight so weight is equals to 14.56 okay floating point number enter the location so location is local now check the cost so 14 point something i have entered so location is local so it will come inside this entire block now I will try to check this one. This is false. So don't execute this one. This is false. So don't execute this one. Now I will come to the else block. Now based on this formula. So 3 plus weight 14 point something I have entered. So 14 point something minus 2 into 1.5. Whatever is the cost which is going to come. It will try to print it at the end. So at the end out of everything I am writing a print statement. So cost is going to be this one. Now let's suppose if I am going to enter weight is equal to 56.78 kg. Location is equals to international, right? Location is international. So 56 point something kg of weight I have entered, as you can see, 56.78 kg. Location is what? Location is international, which I have entered. Okay, that's completely fine. So it will come over here. Weight is lesser than 2. False. It will come over here, do the calculation, and finally it is going to print the cost. So in this way guys, I am just able to write if else, if else, if else inside it which is called as nested if else kind of a statement. Fine. So hope 
this whole idea is clean and clear to all of you right clean and clear to all of you now with this idea i can write any number of condition that i want so let's try to see some of the some of the more conditions so with if elif else kind of a situation now this time i'm going to check the triangle so what kind of a triangle do we have so we all know that that uh, in a mathematics right so we have equilateral triangle we have a isosceles triangle and we have a scalene triangle right so let's try to understand what kind of a triangle that i will be able to get based on the size of the or based on the comparison of the sides so triangle will be having three sides so based on all of these three sides let's try to understand what is a triangle that i will be able to receive so here right so here let's try to understand these things one by one one by one so here maybe i can try to ask a user to uh you know give a input right give a input so maybe i can try to ask a user to give a input for side a side b and side c and based on that we can we can try to you know uh identify so what kind of a triangle that we have so let's suppose triangle side is equals to a so here i can try to convert it into an integer i n p u t input enter a t r i a n g l e enter a triangle a side okay fine now i can try to take b and c variable so here b and here c so enter a triangle b side enter a triangle c side there will be a triangle and there will be three sides now based on three sides i can try to decide that whether triangle is a equilateral triangle so if all the sides are equal if side a side b and side c is equal so in that case triangle is going to be equilateral triangle now similarly we can write a condition for isosceles triangle and similarly we can try to write for the scalen triangle so one by one let's try to check which triangle we will be having based on the input of the sides so here i can write a condition that if a is equal equal to b is equal equal to c so here i am writing a multiple condition so if a side is equal equal to b side is equal equal to c side so in that case try to print try to print that this is a equilateral triangle triangle okay now i can write a condition for a isosceles triangle so in case of isosceles triangle a is equal equal to b or b is equal equal to c or a is equal equal to c means either of two sides are going to be equal and that is something called as isosceles triangle right so here i can write a condition that l if a is equal equal to b or because either of this condition are supposed to be true and that's the reason why i'm writing or condition okay because in case of or if either of this condition is going to be true it simply means that whole statement is going to be true this is what we have discussed in our like a uh, comparison uh, conditional operator right so if either of this side logical operator sorry logical operator so here either of this side is going to be true so the whole statement is going to be true so i can write for as well as a is equal equal to b or b is equal equal to c or a is equal equal to c so in that situation so what kind of a triangle i will be able to get i will be able to get isosceles triangle i s o c i s o s c l e s triangle triangle i'm bad with the spelling guys i'm literally bad with the spelling whether it's a hindi or whether it's a english but yeah my spelling is literally horrible so else it's going to be scalen scalen triangle so print it's going to be scalen i a n g l e triangle okay now this is the condition now here i'm just trying to show you 
if elif else that's completely fine but i'm trying to show you that i can write even a multiple condition as per my need right by using and or and or and or kind of operator or maybe and or xor kind of operator i will be able to write even a uh, multiple conditions so here if i'm going to execute it it is going to ask me enter a then enter b and then enter c so here enter a side of a is 32 b is 32 and c is 32 now it's going to be a is equals to b is equals to c so it's a equilateral triangle simple here i have written a multiple condition now either of this condition is going to be true it simply means that that my entire statement is going to be true so here let's suppose i'm going to enter enter a side so it's going to be 32 enter b side it's going to be 23 enter c side it's going to be 34 it's a, a skeleton triangle because i have entered all three things differently a comma b comma c if i'm going to print it's 32 23 34 right all three sides are different i can even print in this way all three variable all together now execute now here if i'm going to enter 32 34 and 32 sorry 23 34 23 not in this way 23 34 23 now as you can see 23 34 23 means a is equal equal to c a is equal equal to c so this will fail a is equal equal to b no 23 is not equal to 34 b is equal equal to c 34 is equal equal to 23 no this is true so the whole statement is going to be true so it is going to print this one even you can try to check if you are getting confused at any point of a time simply print this one it's going to be true so if it is going to be true it will come over here and then try to print it very simple right very simple so in this way it will be able to print this one so here i'm just trying to show you that how i can write a multiple condition so it's feasible it's possible to write a multiple conditions as well yes it is going to be a multiple conditions as well now with the same situation with the same situation maybe i have to check if triangle is valid or not let's suppose i'm going to give a side a side b and side c now for a triangle to be valid triangle right for a triangle to be valid triangle according to mathematics let's suppose there is a side a side b and side c so if a plus b is greater than c means combination of summation of side a and b is greater than c and a plus c is greater than b and a a b a c and b c b plus c is greater than a so if this is the situation this is the situation for any triangle let's suppose someone is going to enter the value right and if someone is trying to check whether the triangle is a valid triangle or not right whether it will be able to form a triangle or not so these are the condition which it is supposed to meet all three condition together all three condition together it is supposed to meet that's the reason i'm using and so let's try to write this kind of a situation so if this and this and this if all of these three things are going to be true only in that case right only in that case triangle is going to be valid so let me write down this conditions as well it's a easy peasy kind of a conditions that we are going to write it's not going to be a difficult one so maybe i can just remove this part okay so i'll write a plus b is greater than c okay a plus b is greater than c and and condition so here it's not or it's not an alternative it's an and all three conditions are supposed to be true so and a plus c is greater than b and b plus c is greater than a only in that situation we can say that that we have a valid triangle triangle else invalid now i'll try to input side a 34 side b 23 side c 12 we have a valid triangle so here if i'm going to show you a comma b comma c this is the value which i have entered now just go and check this is the criteria for a valid uh, triangle right it is trying to check all of these three criteria now all together if I'm going to just copy this one and then check, just check, it's going to give me true. 
you can even manually calculate it so a plus b is greater than c a plus c greater than b b plus c greater than a so i can try to check manually so this is how i'm writing a condition so again many people have designed a mathematical formulas and many people have like you know convert those mathematics books into a programming so that children can play yes children can play so in a back end someone has written a code you know this kind of a code we used to write yes so everywhere see whatever things is available in a digital form technically someone has written a code for it right someone has written a code for it in a back end and because of it you are able to avail it you are able to access it in a digital form and yes this is the back end code that we try to write down all the time okay so this is this guys and now we are able to understand if else elif kind of a block we are able to understand even a nested if else elif kind of a block but let me tell you one thing practice is important practice is everything unless and until you are not going to do a practice you will not be able to learn that's a major problem with the programming so keep practicing keep trying then only you will be able to learn things and uh, it's not about a learning it's just about a practice i would say guys there's nothing to learn so we never learn how to speak some language right so we all uh, used to communicate in our native language and in a similar way we just have to adopt a things we just have to practice a little bit so that uh, you know it will be a part of our life that's it that's coding that's programming so keep on doing it if you are facing any kind of a issue do let me know this entire code will be available in a description box link so you can check that out and you can even copy and paste but avoid copy and pasting initially i'm giving you all of these notes but still avoid copy and pasting try to type it initially for a couple of days and then you can do a copy and paste that that's completely fine yeah so with that thank you so much guys see you again in my next python lecture